Hi, I'm Zara, and this is my story. Please like and subscribe. I was born in a small town in Lebanon to parents who were literally God's angels. Both of them were doctors who worked with a charity organization and treated most patients for free. So obviously, we weren't rich, but we were happy. My parents' kindness rubbed off on me too, and even as a small kid, I couldn't see anyone miserable. But soon after I turned 14, my whole life changed. My parents had gone to Syria as part of a medical team, and a few days later, they were reported missing. As search teams still looked for them, I was sent to live with my aunt and cousin in Turkey. Aunt Rabia was extremely wealthy, and she lived in a huge mansion with her daughter, Amel. Aunt welcomed me warmly and showed me around the house. There were beautiful, decorative items in every corner. Oh, wow, this vase is so pretty. That's Amel's choice. We bought it in Paris last year. You've seen the Eiffel Tower? I've heard it scorched. <gasps> I suddenly stumbled backwards and knocked the vase off the table, and it shattered into pieces. <gasps> oh, I'm so sorry. It's all right. I'll, I'll just call someone to clean up the mess, and we'll see the rest of the house later, okay? Gosh, why was I so clumsy? At dinner, I tried to be extra careful not to drop anything, and Aunt noticed my nervousness. Are you still thinking about those vases? Don't worry about it. Um, but uh, just in case Amel says something, uh, don't take it too seriously, okay? What do you mean? Well, her heart's in the right place, but she just has, um, a different way of expressing her feelings. Just know that we're both very happy to have you here. I wasn't quite sure what Aunt meant, and I was quite curious to meet this mysterious Amel now. Aunt had to leave when she had an important call during dinner, and as I cleared up the plates, a group of laughing girls barged in. One of them spotted me and said, Hey, you, go get something to drink for me and my friends. This girl must be Amel. Hi, I'm Zara, and I'm your... I didn't ask for your name, did I? Just go get me a Coke and an iced tea and a coffee. You know where the kitchen is, right? I nodded and returned soon with the girls' drinks, and no one even said thank you, which felt odd to me. Just then, one of Amel's friends accidentally knocked over her glass, spilling her drink on the table. Amel snapped her fingers at me, and I wiped up the mess and left. Later, as I was watching TV in the lounge, Amel walked in alone, and she suddenly looked livid. I know you're new, but are you crazy? You're a maid here, not a guest. Actually, I'm not the maid. I'm your cousin, Zara. Amel looked taken aback. So why were you acting like a maid before? I wasn't. You just asked me for something, so I did it. But why? Are you some kind of moron who just does everything she's told? No, but you're my cousin and I didn't mind helping you out. She just stared at my face, then started laughing and walked off. One day, Aunt was telling me about how she'd started her skincare company alone, and now it was a million-dollar business. I was really impressed. I want to take my brand global, and I'm looking for someone to model the new range. But you're so gorgeous yourself, Aunt. You should be the face of your products. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, she's letting you stay in her home, but there's no need to be such a suck-up. No, I'm serious. Aunt is stunning, and you take after her, you know. <laughs> As if. I guess Mom hasn't told you her little secret yet. And suddenly, she leapt forward and grabbed Aunt's hair. I thought she was going to hurt her, but then Aunt Rabia's hair came off. It was a wig, and she was completely bald. Aunt looked really embarrassed, and I was shocked beyond words. But Amel just laughed and walked off singing. Mom is a baldy, mom is a baldy. Aunt quickly tried to put her wig back on, but I stopped her. Emel shouldn't have done that. But Aunt, you're stunning even without your wig. Oh, Zara, you don't have to say that. I lost all my hair due to alopecia a year ago, and I know I look like a freak. No, you don't. You look strong and beautiful, like a superhero straight out of a Marvel movie. It really suits you. You really think so? Absolutely. I started school soon and I felt a little out of place, but I decided I'd just focus on my studies. One day, I was having lunch outside in the schoolyard when a football came flying out of nowhere and hit a young boy playing close to me, knocking him down. 
I immediately helped him to his feet, then took him to the bathroom and got him cleaned up. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm fine. But wait, my iPod, I can't find it. It must have fallen down somewhere. Don't worry, I'll help you look. We both went back to look for it, but when I found it, it was completely smashed, like someone had stepped on it. The boy was about to burst into tears and I quickly said, hey, don't cry. Um, okay, how about I give you mine? Uh, really? Is your mom gonna be okay with that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure my mom won't mind. There, it's all yours. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Suddenly, someone behind me spoke. Wow, awesome indeed. I turned around to see a tall, handsome boy holding a football. I'm sorry, that was my football that hit him. Kicked it a little too hard. I think you should be saying sorry to him, not me. But the little boy was already skipping away with my iPod. <laughs> I guess I owe you an iPod. Why'd you give yours away anyway? Because it's just an iPod, and look how happy he is. He was about to say something when suddenly Amel appeared and threw her arms around his neck. There you are, babe. I see you've already met my cousin. And Zara, this is my fiancé, Marat. Oh, you two are cousins? Yes, yes. Remember I told you about the orphan cousin from Libya that we took in? You know how big-hearted mom is. It's Lebanon, and I'm not an orphan. My parents will be back soon. But yes, my aunt is generous and amazing. And with that, I walked away. A few days later, aunt was hosting a dinner for Marat and his parents. Everything seemed to be going smoothly. But when the souffles were served, they had sunk in, and the Mel called for the cook. Did you expect me and my guests to have this soup for dessert? I know you're not the brightest, but how stupid do you have to be to mess it up? Amel, that's enough, honey. You can go now. I felt furious. I wanted to tell Amel off so badly, but I didn't want to create a scene. Later that evening, as we all sat in the living room, Marat suddenly turned to me and said, I've noticed that you're always wearing this big watch. It seems too heavy for your wrist. Oh, yeah, it's my dad's. Mom gave it to him for his birthday, and, well, I've just borrowed it till they get back home. Zara, could you please not talk about your parents? It's just uncomfortable. It's not uncomfortable for me to talk about them. Yes, but it makes other people feel weird. No one wants to talk about depressing stuff. I felt angry tears stinging my eyes, and I quickly excused myself and went out to the garden. I found the poor cook crying outside and I consoled her as best as I could. As she walked away, I turned to find Marat behind me. Your cook seemed really upset. Maybe Amel was a bit harsh, but I guess you have to deal with servants a certain way. A certain way? The only way to deal with anyone is with respect. Yes, but she made a mistake and Amel had to tell her, not in front of everyone and not like that. And the cook is only human. Her son is really unwell and she's worried. And even then, she prepared a whole feast for us. Do you know everything about all the servants? I do talk to them. Don't you? Sure, to give instructions, but nothing about their personal lives. They live in your house and serve you every day. And you don't care to know anything about them? <laughs> Wait, are you saying I'm arrogant? Well, yes. Yes, I am. I started walking away, but suddenly, he gently grabbed my wrist. Amel shouldn't have said that about your parents. I'm sorry, and I'm sure they'll be found soon. Me too, and thank you. And then I left. The next evening, when I went to the kitchen, the cook seemed to be in a really good mood, and she told me that Murat had offered to fully pay for her son's treatment. I guess he wasn't so bad after all. A few weeks later, I was walking out of a cafe in town when I walked straight into someone. Marat, a small velvet box fell at my feet, and we both quickly bent down to pick it up, and ended up bumping our heads really hard. Then we both burst out laughing and sat down on a bench. I… I just picked out a ring for Amel. You know, we have our engagement party in two weeks. What do you think? He opened the box to reveal a diamond ring. I'm sure she'll love it. But I asked what you think. It's lovely. I'm just the wrong person to ask about diamonds. Well, what kind of ring would you want if you were getting married? I've never thought about it. And I haven't thought about marriage either. 
But if it ever happens, I just hope I'm as happy as my parents. And they've never had anything fancy, so I don't think that stuff matters. Marat looked at me with a strange expression. And for some reason, it made my heart flutter. You're nothing like your cousin Zara. In fact, you're unlike any girl I know. Just then, a few raindrops fell on us, and Marat said he'd drive me home. Nope, I'm walking. It'll be fun. But you'll get wet. Exactly. When was the last time you walked in the rain, Marat? Um, never. That's just sad. It won't kill you, I promise. I started walking, and he joined me. And then it started raining really hard, and he took off his jacket and put it over my head as we ran for cover, laughing like kids. <laughs> When it slowed down a bit, Marat walked me home, and I asked him if he'd like to come in and see Amel. Um, no, I, I should be heading home. But thank you, Zara. I haven't laughed this much in ages. You're something else. He smiled, and my heart was fluttering again. I went in, trying to push away that stupid feeling. But just as I was about to walk into my room, someone pushed me hard. It was Amel. What were you doing with Marat, you witch? Hey, can you calm down? We just bumped into each other and he walked me home. Wait a second. Is that Marat's jacket you're wearing? Suddenly, I realized that he'd draped it around my shoulders and I'd forgotten to return it. Look, it started raining and he was just being nice. Listen to me loud and clear, Zara. He's my fiancé and I don't want you hanging out with him. I didn't plan it, Amel. I'll just stay away from him. You don't need to feel so insecure. Suddenly, she pounced at me and snatched the jacket away. Why would you make me feel insecure? You're just a poor orphan living on our charity. Someone like him would never even think about someone like you. And neither would I. But if you call me a poor orphan one more time, Amel, I might just punch your face. And with that, I pushed her out of my room and slammed the door shut. I was getting sick of her. After that, I completely avoided Murad in school or any time he visited Amel at home. He was her fiancé, and it was best for me to stay away from him. The engagement party was being hosted by Aunt, and the whole house was buzzing with excitement. But just as they were about to exchange rings, Murad suddenly stopped and looked up at her. Amel, I can't do this. I can't get engaged to you. What? What do you mean? I'm really sorry. I, I tried but I just can't convince myself to go through with this. It isn't fair to us both. What are you talking about, Marat? I I'm, I'm in love with someone else, and it's not you. I'm sorry. Marat left the room, and everyone just stood there, speechless with shock. Emel burst into tears and ran off to her room. What had just happened? Aunt Rabia looked really upset. An hour later when I went up to my room, I was shocked to see that the whole place was trashed and Amel was standing in a corner, holding Dad's watch. Amel, have you lost your mind? And what are you doing with my watch? I was waiting for you to come so I could show you. And with that, she put my watch on a table and smashed it with a hammer. Oh my God, no! What, what did you do? That was my dad's. How could you? Well, I don't think he's coming back for it. And suddenly, I snapped. I leapt forward and grabbed her hair, and we broke into a huge fight. Moments later, Aunt walked in and pulled us apart. What's gotten into you two? She stole my fiancé. She's a snake, Mom. I don't know what you're talking about, you psycho. Aunt took Amel away, and I climbed into my bed and cried for what seemed like hours. The next day... Aunt came into my room with a really serious face. Zara, I'm sending you away to live with my cousin in another city, and you'll be attending school there. I'll pay for everything, of course. I stared at her face, feeling a bit heartbroken. I loved my aunt, and I didn't want to be away from her. I wish you would believe me that this isn't my fault, Aunt Rabia. I do believe you, but I have to take care of my daughter and I don't think it's a good idea for you two to be around each other. I hope you'll understand. I left to stay with Aunt's cousin the next day. I missed her a lot, but her cousin was kind too, and I soon settled into my new school and tried to forget about my life before. But I never gave up hope that my parents would be found one day. I worked hard for a scholarship and got into a good university. One day as I was walking out of university, 
A gust of wind suddenly blew some papers out of my hand, and as I ran after them, I tripped and was about to fall face forward when someone caught me. I got you, and your papers too. I looked up in complete shock. It was Marat. What, what are you doing here? Obviously looking for you. But why, Marat? You don't know how difficult you made things for me. I, I know, and I'm really sorry. When I found out you left, I knew there was no use coming after you because you'd never make your aunt or Amel unhappy. And I went away myself, trying to forget you, but I just couldn't. You somehow changed me, Zara. I don't want to just settle for something ordinary anymore. I want to be with someone who makes me happy, who makes me better. I'm in love with you. Maybe since the first time I met you. It was the sweetest thing I'd ever heard, and my eyes welled up. I never really stopped thinking about you either, Marat. But I, I don't think we can be together. My aunt would be convinced that I broke you and Amel up, and she'd hate me. That's another reason why I'm here. Your aunt's been sick for a while, and I think she'd really like to see you. There's something she wants to tell you. I immediately dropped everything and went to see Aunt Rabia, and I was shocked to find her so weak. Why didn't you tell me you were sick, aunt? Who's been taking care of you? Where's Amel? Amel got married to a rich, much older guy some months ago, and she left. She hasn't visited me since. Well, I'm here now. Aunt tearfully took my hands. My darling Zara, I'm sorry that I ever sent you away from me. I was angry then, but I don't blame Marat for falling for you. You're the best person I know, and you have my blessing to be with him. You deserve every bit of happiness. I hugged Aunt tight, and then she said something that shook my world. There's something else, but I, I had to be absolutely sure before I could tell you. I got a call from an agency in Syria that had been trying to reach you. Zara, your parents have been found. I spoke to them myself, and they're flying in tomorrow. I just couldn't stop the tears from flowing. It sounded unbelievable, but I'd never, ever lost hope. I left Aunt to rest and found Marat waiting outside. You knew about my parents? I did, but I had to let your aunt be the one to tell you. I can't wait to see them again and introduce them to you. I'm so happy for you, Zara. It looks like it's gonna rain. Let's go for a walk, shall we? I'd really love that.